So once again, I'm going to invite um, my guest to the stage. We are going to have a moment of about 15 minutes. There is a critical aspect of our presentation that I want to bring again to your notice. And it's about a visitation of a certain creature-like bird. We will continue. There's an aspect of our testimony that I want us to be acquainted with. It's a critical aspect, and that's why I had to shift it for tonight. The purpose of our effort is to make us see that issues concerning spiritual warfare are very practical. Very, very practical. And also, the way to go by spiritual warfare are very practical means. So first of all, we are legitimizing the uh, line of study by bringing real cases of people that were under circumstances of spiritual warfare, where entities without bodies, because demons are persons without bodies, entities that are persons without bodies were found culpable in seeking to bring injury to the lives of mortal men. Sister Grace, test your microphone again. Praise God. Okay, she's live now. Can you continue? Meanwhile, you're welcome to the stage. Thank you so much. Amen. <laughs> Can you continue from where you stopped yesterday? We're talking about a bed, a a bed. That's how the creature was in the realm of the spirit. Uh, can you tell us about that experience? Praise God. Praise the Lord. Um, I think I'll start by saying thank you so much sir, for this opportunity. Um, although I have not had understanding of the warfare, but it's becoming more clearer and clearer. Um, mm. Yesterday I stopped at the bed. I was sleeping in a dream where I saw a bird came on a ring. His legs were locked up on the, on the ring. And the ring was more of like um, the light. There was light, but the light was now, quite Please deep. stay with us. You know, I will keep stopping her momentarily to run some commentaries. The reason for the commentaries is to bring biblical perspectives and also to show us scriptures that will equip us. Okay? Um, maybe we need to turn our Bibles to the book of Revelation chapter 1. Revelation chapter 1 verse number 1. The Bible says the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave unto him to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. If you check the word signified in the original language, it translates to sign language. So this revelation that Jesus Christ wants to pass unto his saints regarding things which must shortly come to pass, the revelations were handed out to an angelic personnel. And we know that an angel is a spirit being. And this angel transmitted the revelation to John by sign language. Are you, are you there? Sign language. So the language of the spirit is sign language. Your ability to decode the signs that are in the language is a function of your intimacy with the Holy Ghost, who happens to be the storehouse of God's wisdom. It's in form of sign language. So I want you to know that the Holy Spirit has been transmitted to every one of us from the day you gave your life to Christ. It is just that your ability to comprehend what he's saying is dependent on your intim intimacy with him because he is the personality that holds the wisdom of God. 
second scripture. How many of you still remember the book of um, Ephesians chapter 1? Uh, beginning from verse 17 or 18, as the case may be, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him. In order for us to access spiritual knowledge, there are two lines, streams of grace that we need. The first grace is the spirit of revelation. What the spirit of revelation does is that it occasions disclosures of spiritual things. And when spiritual things are disclosed to you, they come in form of sign language. That's why you will need the spirit of wisdom to decode the signs that have been furnished in the spirit. Without access to the spirit of wisdom, it will be impossible for us to decode the signs by which communication is achieved in the realm of the spirit. There are no... Uh, 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 60% of warfares that we go through appears as signs either in dreams or in other forms of signs. Because of one of God's commitment to you is to bring disclosures to you that will give you an advantage in the spiritual battle. And just like God can communicate with signs, just like God can give you dreams, just like God can speak to you, Satan can also speak to you. Satan can also give you dreams. You don't believe that? Okay. How many of you have been tempted before? Have you been tempted? Oh, okay, I see, because I know you, are, you don't undergo temptation. It's only people like us that labor in temptations. But I have seen you have matured to a, separate, to a certain spiritual level that have made you immune to temptation. If you have ever been tempted before, it means Satan used the infrastructure of your receptacle to speak to you. Do you understand that? So she said she had a dream and she saw a bird. Follow carefully, okay? When the bird came to me, he, he was making demands. The bird was making demands. And the demand was my blood. Or the bird was demanding your blood. And then I said... Uh, I hope you know this entire setup is a disclosure that has been made available by Satan. Just like I said, you can have dreams that are demonic, dreams that are advanced by Satan, thoughts that are advanced by Satan, whispers, voices that are advanced by Satan. So this situation is a situation that Satan set up. Now, this is the thing about Satan that you need to know. Satan is the inventor of lies. The Bible calls him the original liar, and the Bible reveals that when he lies, he is speaking his native language. That is why when you see Jesus in situations where he's conducting deliverance or expelling devils, almost always he does not converse with the devil. And the reason why he doesn't converse with the devils is because the devil is not capable of saying the truth. An evangelist was speaking to me some time ago, and he said he went for a crusade. And while he was on the crusade ground, he gave an altar call that if you are a witch here, lift up your hands. So the witches owned up, there were like 25 of them, all right, we are witches. We, um, we are witches. So when he wanted to release the authority of God to destroy the witchcraft they were carrying, Satan spoke to him and said, do you know what? If you leave me alone, I will leave you alone. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you what? So when Satan brought that proposal to him, the way he would have prayed for the witches 
He refrained because he wanted to line up. So he, he did not deliver the witches. On his way, after the crusade going, he had a flat tire and he almost died. So even when Satan was negotiating, he was lying. He didn't have an intention to leave the evangelist alone. And this event happened in 1983. And since then, the evangelist has been, oh, Jesus Christ, anytime witches are involved. <laughs> Please help me tell your neighbor, Satan is not capable of telling the truth. If the devil tells you you will die, that means you have long life. And that is the truth. Are you still with me? All right, so um, we are going to trust the Lord to benefit from this moment. We have 19 minutes. We'll take, um, we'll stop when it's four minutes to go, okay? So I, I told the, the bird, you can't have my blood. If you need the blood was in the dream, if you need the blood, take the blood of Jesus. That was where he flew off. And can you hear her? Huh? All right, so can you add this to... Some people say they can't hear her. Okay, I said when the bird came and demanded for the blood, I told him I can't, he can't have my blood. If he needs blood, he should take the blood of Jesus. And he flew. While he was going, he was saying, it must be your blood. It must be your, it blood. Must be your blood. He kept saying it. I can't count the number of times till I lost his voice and I woke up. Shortly when I woke up, few, is it two days after? Like we said... That dream was orchestrated by the devil. And in the devil, in the dream, the devil's intentions were revealed. Are you there? So, at least we know now, the devil wants her blood. For what he wants it for, we don't know. But we know that the devil wants what? Her blood. All right? So, I woke up, I prayed. And then, a um, few days after, I had, I had a pig farm. And the pigs were like 20, and calls kept coming. They were dying. Oh, Every your pigs day. started dying? Yes, all okay. of them died. All, and, all the 20 pigs died? Yes. Mm. And then um, I had an investment. I lost it. Mm. My younger sister had um, a wedding gown shop. She rents wedding gowns and all that. Everything. It was only her shop among all shops that burnt down. Her shop got burnt down. So all those things were to get to me. How many of you still remember when we spoke about the hedge? The hedge has three circles. The first circle covers you. Second circle covers your household. Third circle covers what you have. Can we try again? First circle covers what? You. Second circle covers what? You. Third circle covers what? what you. Now, when you begin to see losses, in a monumental magnitude, it is suggestive of the fact that you are at war. When members of your household begin to fall sick in an uncontrollable manner, it is also suggestive of the fact that you are at war. And when you yourself begin to have near-death experiences, Three accidents in one week. You survive by the whiskers. It's time to immobilize yourself and to dust your prayer mat and say, Satan, I am also ready. Look for your boxers. Put them on in the night. And when others go to sleep, stay awake, praying in the spirit. It was Pastor Austin Jangfa, and I think Tena, Pastor Tena. They invited us to Rwanda, so I sent three of them to go. When, what did they do? Um, is it an idol that they saw or something? And Pastor Austin rebuked the spirit and said, you spirit, so, so, and so. We rebuke you. And he went to sleep. And the spirit came and almost suffocated him. When he called me, I told him, 
Have you ever watched a wrestling match that only one punch sent the opponent to defeat? When you release one punch like that, go and put on your boxers in the night and continue that fight until the break of day. Whenever there is an indication that Satan wants something from you, wake up. Because it is time to fight. If you, if you forsake those signs, the thing Satan desires will happen suddenly because of your inability to stand up and fight. Yes, sister? Okay, it was after then I, my husband now spoke with me and told me to chat Papa. So I chatted him and I told him what has been happening. And then... Um, Meanwhile, said, I was in the office. We we're about to go offshore, I guess. Those days when I was still in Lagos. And as she was speaking, I, I felt death in her voice. Death was in her voice. Yes, go on. So he asked me to, to send him SMS with my line. So he called back immediately. When he called me, he was praying. He said he sees a deposit on my heart. And meanwhile, someone had, my mom met someone and told her the same thing. He said, there's a deposit on the heart of your daughter. I don't know your daughter, Hope, but the enemy has afflicted her. The arrow was supposed to hit my mom, but it met me praying. And the devil has actually met the wrong person because this one will not die. That was what he told my mom. And then it became, that was, it was, it was that period I began to gather my feet in pieces to push on. So when daddy called and prayed with me, shortly when he, few minutes after the prayers, it was like there was a stirring and it, the attack was so forceful. And it was my life at that moment. I began to gasp for, for air. You could see from my chest how my heart, you could see like something is moving, how my heart, my heart was rattling. You could see it obviously. And it became, fear gripped everybody around me. I couldn't really talk. So my sister was with my phone. She knows you very well. And then I, I was able to call your name. When I called your name, she quickly called you. And then she called daddy and put it on call, on loudspeaker. And then he heard, heard the way I was, I was gasping for, for breath. And he called me. He said, Grace Hope, where are you going? Come back here. And it was like a call back to life. And then when I could hear his voice, there was this, there was this, I don't know how to explain. You could know that you are not alone in this whole thing. And then that was how I got stabilized. Until today, I am here. Please note, the reason for this um, interview is not to show how anointed I am. In fact, I'm asking God for real anointing now. I, I don't have... I've been laboring, asking God for real anointing. Yesterday night, I said, Jesus, souls must be saved. Souls must be brought to the kingdom. There are quarters where you cannot go and convince anybody to give his life to Christ. We need to have superior power because human beings fall sick. So if human beings can fall sick, it means we have, there is a need that we can meet through the Holy Ghost. Okay, please. So it's not about that. Um, The spirit of death. Okay, maybe we don't have time to talk about the spirit of death today. How to defeat it and how to cheat it. The spirit of death. Well, we are 10 minutes to go. Can you restore my, my platform? Spiritual warfare is real. And that is what we are trying to establish this evening. Uh, when, God equips us, when God equips us with what is needed for us to engage in spiritual battle, he gives us authority. So what happened in our case is, was that it was authority that went forth, brought about. He also gives us power, power. 
in dealing with spiritual situations, we need authority and we need what? Power. We will talk about that and how it works, how you release authority. But we are just taking it gradually, taking it gradually, taking it gradually. We are going to pray today. Why are you so desperate to restore this microphone? I'm already enjoying not holding things. And you are desperate to see that I'm restored in my old state. We are going to pray tonight as a congregation. And just in case they are relatives of yours, that you have come to the conclusion of the fact that the sicknesses that they are suffering from are not are not based on, on infection. This is based on spiritual causes. We are going to focus on that in our prayers tonight. Hallelujah. But first we we'll pray for Sister Hope. The Lord literally brought this lady back from the dead. And today she has a son. She's married and she has a son already. And guess what? Satan was not able to get that pint of blood that he was desperately in search of. There are many more people that God is willing to extend his liberty to, to extend his freedom to. And it is our prayer that during the course of these meetings, this fasting and prayer, all kinds of things will be set aright in the name of Jesus. Can you say a word of blessing upon Sister Grace Hope? And such affliction will never arise around your life forever. In the name of Jesus. The hand of God will be strong on you. In the name of Jesus. You will fulfill your days. In the name of Jesus. Grace is released on your life. In Jesus mighty name. Amen. You are released. Is there any family member of yours that is bedridden, afflicted, sick, diseased, and the doctors have made a fortune out of that unfortunate situation? S syringes, drugs, tests, medical care, and all kinds of costs that have accumulated because of the unfortunate situation. Do you have any relative like that? Tonight you want to say his, his or her name before the Lord and ask God for an intervention. Just take any position that is convenient for you, whether sitting or standing. But we want to draw them out of the edge of the grave. We want to draw them back from the edge of the underworld. We want to draw them back from the edge of the city steps and to extend salvation to them and to ask that God will do wonders, that the Lord will do signs, that he will bring his counsel to pass, that grace will be released, that grace will be made manifest can you say a word? There is authority on your lips. There is authority on your lips and this authority that you carry on your lips has the capacity to restore that which the devil is trying to steal. I so say, Abraham Baratami. Endroboko Sokori Abraskito Mandeli Yama Mama 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 We decree tonight that you are restored. The devil attempts to take where he has not invested, he attempts to take where he has not sold. We frustrate his agenda. We frustrate his attempts. I 
Sose Calambro Siga Manzala Metia Conse Kede Bonda Endore Casima Santora Bahaya Lai Possigo Boro Conse Pura Nasa Catelia Kunde Beria Ando Senir Ando Se Salacuria Entos kilo bondo, rama lais, jema kanta baboria, endo verakanda babosande, labro kose katakure basanturi, endo rokoria, isa manzala baboke, veres kontani, veres kontani, veres konsenebo, veres konti abanda, akaya konda. Akaya Sena Inte Rata Babo Konda Asi Mande Asi Mande Yekande Zemina Taske Tobri Ala Babo Konda Ala Prosek Ala Mansanga Ala Babo Kuri Esa Dian Esa Iso Zeyli Esa Minanda U Kabesa Abraski to prendo konda, ya kabodi masanto, ya kasanteria, ya kasomantalia, abresko bilato. All of you online, you can insist tonight and say before the Lord that relative of yours, that Satan is attempting to drag into the grave. There is authority on your lips. There is power on your lips there is grace on your lips you can make a demand you can make a demand you can make a demand right now you can make a demand you can make a demand yes grace is released grace is released those of you online there is grace released tonight grace release we decree you and yours shall not die you and yours shall not die you and yours shall not die sabro bobo bosiko tali mandela seminantoria kabalasi alaba bonda kandia deli konsele Deli consamina. Deli consecutala. You can still demand for restoration. You can say, rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. For you shall not die, but you shall live to testify of the works and the goodness of God in the land of the living. my God, bring life, bring life, bring life, bring life, restore, restore, restore. Lea conce mandale, lea conce seli bocora, res conta buconati, esilo bonde, rabidat, Askama, Elomanta, Ilokosketa Branta Baboria, Seminai Kobe Labunda. In the name of Jesus. Finally, Nigeria itself has been walking on crutches. The miracle power, walking power of Jesus, needs to do something quickly to restore our fortunes, to restore our hopes. There are several seeds that God has sown in Nigeria that is meant for Africa. If we never get to rise, many bad things will happen on the continent. Oh my God, the firstborn must rise, the giant must rise. 
Is there paralysis? Jesus is the healer of men and nations. Come heal the paralysis of Nigeria. Come raise her from the dead. The same way you spoke to Lazarus in the tomb, corruption had set in. Darkness had set in. Just like corruption has set in, 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 in Nigeria. Corruption is taking a toll. We say Nigeria, hear, hear our voice. We speak into the land of corruption. Arise and come forth. Comfort. Comfort. Let your splendor be revealed again. Let your glory be made manifest again. Let the hand of our King be seen in your midst. In the name of Jesus.